How are you doing there? Um, since we're all locked in and um, lockdown, isolation, um, I thought today I would share one of my favourite recipes. This is a recipe I make a lot at home. It's a Thai style curry. Very, very simple. There's not a massive array of ingredients, but it can be used with any style of minced protein that you like. So it actually makes it very cheap and very affordable. Today I'm using minced turkey breast just because it's nice and lean, nice and healthy. So first of all, we start, um, we make a little paste that we fry, the, the Thais call this a holy trinity paste. It's white peppercorns, garlic, and the stems, just the stalks of the coriander. You can see it here, I've pounded that down to a paste. Um, just keep it going, it doesn't have to be too smooth, just as long as all the fibrous nature of the, the stems have gone. The Thais used to use an awful lot of white peppercorn in their cooking. Before the chili was introduced, it was a way of they, them finding natural heat. Right, so we're going to get started. Also, this is a fresh Thai curry, red curry paste that I had in the freezer. I usually make quite a lot of red curry paste and freeze it down um, in ice cube trays and then just pop out an ice cube tray, an ice cube or two whenever you need one. But any store-bought red curry paste will work. So, we're going to start on a low heat. A little bit of coconut oil. Again, coconut oil is very, very good for you. Um, it can be better than the processed artificial oils that are used in, um, in especially vegetable oils and soy oils. So, first of all, we're going to get this little holy trinity paste into the pan. It starts to smell very fragrant very quickly. Now you don't want to cook this too much and again you can see it's on quite a low heat. Now with the turkey I put it all in in one piece. Just wash my hand. Now the reason I do this is because I want the turkey to, to stay a bit clumpy. I uh, don't want to break it up until I've sort of fried it on both sides. That way you'll be left with quite a bit of texture still and it won't be just like a, a chili or a bolognese though. So I'll turn the heat up at this point. And just while that's cooking, I will add the red curry paste into the side. Now also to this I'm going to add, I've had a, a tin of coconut milk in the fridge and I'm just going to use the top of this that where the solidified coconut, that's all the richness, all the cream, all the oils. So I'm going to cook this out to get all those natural oils. Now this will, this will turn quite nutty as it cooks and get a really, really great flavour to the end dish. Now you can see that's cooking away, so I'll just flip that over. You can see the paste on the side cooking. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I'll just start to break it up lightly. And you can see as it breaks up, it stays in when it's clumped. And the red curry paste will continue to fry and cook. At this point, I'll turn the heat up high. Okay. Give it a little toss. But that's the sort of texture I'm looking for. So I just want that to continue frying for a, a little second. I wish you could smell this. The smell of this is it's definitely one of my old time favorite dishes. And actually quite healthy. Right. So I really you just want to cook this through. You don't want to cook it a whole way through because it still has time. We're going to caramelize some, some palm sugar into that, some fish sauce and then finish it with some coconut milk. And 
And really with this type of curry, you can add any vegetables you wish to. Um, today I've just got a nice little selection of um, different vegetables and some bok choy just to finish it off. Again, it get, keeps it very healthy. You, you can get lots and lots of vitamins, minerals, all your, any vegetable you want really does work in this. Okay, so there's still a little bit of pinkness in the meat. So at this point, I'm just going to add one teaspoon of cut, this is palm sugar. So you can buy it in a block, uh, but this is a, the palm sugar just from the local supermarket. And again, I'll, I'll allow that to caramelize. As that caramelizes, it'll help to um, it'll help to cook the paste out a little bit more. Okay, you can see that's starting to bubble now. So now the fish sauce. Um, a lot of people aren't massive fans of fish sauce, but I absolutely adore it. Now to make this work, you actually need about two tablespoons of fish sauce in. That might seem a lot, but really that's, we really want that flavour to, to come through. Again, that's the way the Thais season their food. They don't use salt, it mostly comes from the shrimp paste or the fish sauce. Okay. With this then, I'm going to make a hole in it. So I'm just going to pour the actual clear milk into this now. And I'll let that cook for about one minute. Then I'll add the vegetables. Okay. And what the milk's doing, the milk is just, the, the, the liquid, the clear liquid is just helping cook the, the mince out until it's fully cooked through. And then I'll enrich it at the end with the um, coconut cream that's at the top of the tray. But you can see all the colours in that. You really don't want to cook, cook it too long. You want the vegetables to be crisp, full of all their nutrients, full of flavour. So, at this point, I'm going to add not all, you can keep this for another use, but that would be, that's more than enough there. It just helps it with this dish. And then, if you come over here, I'm going to do two birds' eye I like to have this spicy, so I have two birds' eye chilies. Now, always make sure you wash your hands after you use these. Okay, the birds' eye chilies are fierce teeth. You don't have to use them if you don't want to, but I do love the heat. Now, I'm going to add the bok choy. At this point, I'm just going to turn the heat down a little bit. And I'm just going to add another little bit of the you can see this is very firm because I've had it in the in the fridge. But that's what you want then. If it's if it's warm out of the cupboard, it's very difficult to separate the milk from the, the cream. Okay, and there's just two more stages now left. One is finish with a little bit of lime and finish with plenty of coriander. I would also use Thai basil for this, but I couldn't get any. I suppose um, strange times we're living in at the minute, and it was very difficult to find Thai basil anywhere. So, you just want to wilt the bok choy. I'm just going to turn the heat up a bit to get that wilt in. And as you can see, this dish was cooked in real time and it only takes about five minutes from start to end. Sorry, Ken. <laughs> okay, coriander in and lime juice.
And there you have it. That is the finished dish. I would serve this with plenty of jasmine rice and you're good to go. Enjoy.